Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. Well, right now I am at the home of one of the funniest guys on the peninsula, you might say. I'm here with Gary Johnson and all of his wild animals here in Rolling Hills Estates. Thanks for having us here. Oh, thank you for coming. All right. Well, we're here, of course, Gary, because he just came up with his book, A View from the Hill. And what it is, it's all your cartoons, well, a lot of your cartoons from when you... Best of. Best of. Yeah. Um, from his cartoons for many years at the PV News. Right. And uh, so what made you decide to do this now? Well, actually, I saw a... I've been doing the cartoons for the PV News for seven years. And um, I'm, in, I'm sitting on a stack of cartoons, literally at least 500, because I've been doing it for seven years. It used to be twice a week, now it's once a week. And I read an article in the PV News about these local publishers that were um, interested in publishing some kind of offbeat, unusual books. I sent them uh, an email, and turns out that Kat, who is one of the publishers, was a, quote, <laughs> fan of the cartoons. So she knew who I was. She knew what the, all about the cartoons. So she, they jumped on it. All right. It was well, great. Of course, anyone that lives in the peninsula and gets the PV News knows who you are because your cartoons will either entertain, you say, or maybe enrage, it depends. And some but, of that. Um, mm -hmm. So talk about what it's like to, to have that cartoon in there and sort of your message each week. Obviously, it changes. Well, it's a challenge depending on uh, the subject matter. And I need to do, or I don't need to, but generally the editorial cartoon is based on a story that was in the paper the week before. Unless it's, you know, if it's back to school or if it's Christmas time or if it's Thanksgiving or something like that, I can base it on that. But generally, it's based on a cartoon I did, I mean, I'm sorry, a story that was done the week before. So sometimes the concept jumps right out at you. I mean, you read it and you go, oh, that's a given. Sometimes it's a struggle. You, you have to look for something humorous or entertaining within one of those within one of those stories. And sometimes, again, it's more of a challenge than others. Right. And of course, the challenge is, one thing is, this is supposed to be, you know, have, you're supposed to be having fun. I mean... You're supposed to be having fun. Cartoons yeah. are supposed to be entertaining. I think so, yeah. And humorous. And, but you get a lot of flack. I mean... I get a lot of flack. <laughs> I don't necessarily as much as poor Mary Scott, who has become a, a good friend of mine, at least I think she is. And um, she gets all the emails and the letters and evidently she said she is contacted uh, for more than any other reason um, <laughs> regarding the cartoons and it's generally negative. <laughs> <laughs> People right. don't call up and go, hey, that's a great cartoon. You know, they call up because they're complaining about something or something, you know, rubbed them the wrong way. Or whatever. But I would think as an artist and what you do, you want to be provoking. You want to know Oh, people. I love it. You want people to call up. If nobody's calling, then you probably aren't doing the great job. There's no such thing as bad press. Right. There right. you go. Yeah, exactly. Now, as I was thumbing through this, I, you know, continue to chuckle. Like you said, these were, you submitted a couple hundred for the publisher to kind of A couple hundred. On. I had, this, again, a stack of, I don't know, 550 something. And they picked these 90. Right. So I just want to open up just the first page. I don't know if, if uh, Gino can zoom on it. The first one, and I had to laugh as a mom on the hill, it says, Welcome to the Palace Verdes Peninsula, where the kids are smarter and in better shape than yours. And I sort of feel like we sing this song here, my kids are smarter than your kids, but yeah. I don't know. You have kids. Did you feel that way? It's sort of that pressure um, cooker. Our kids, you know, did, did I overachievers. See it? Did I see it? Absolutely. Oh, totally, totally. And I, I that's not that much of an exaggeration. Right, right. Think. So when you sit down and you start working on your cartoon for the week, are you trying to stir the pot? No, I'm not trying to stir the pot. It's it's I'm looking for a humorous take on the subject. If in turn if it stirs the pot, that's okay. That's just a byproduct. Yeah, I was looking at some of the cartoons. One I was trying to figure out was you have a Christmas tree that was being lit up at the uh, promenade of the peninsula right. with a peacock like fall, fall, soaring off it. He what, was what, was, what was that about? So what happened there? They were just all that the story was about that they lit the tree at the at the, at the promenade <laughs> and yeah. it happened to be a peacock flying and the by. Peacock flying. Now look, <laughs> and I've I've put the peacocks through the ringer. I mean, in the throughout the years they've been cooked and and. Um, and electrocuted and run over and everything else, but I'm I'm a pro pe peacock guy. But they, they're a funny subject matter. They really are, and they're unique subject matter. They're here on the peninsula, you know. Generally, right. You know, not many neighborhoods have what we have here. So there's there's like a cast of characters that I constantly return to. The peacocks being probably my 
Right. And we say talk about what here on the peninsula, you grew up here. So this is your home and you care about mm -hmm. your community, I would think. Yeah, talk here. about growing up here and just sort of how it's inspired what you do. Moved here when I was in uh, junior high, went to Malaga Cove. I think I, be I began doing what I do as it actually as a, as a child. I used to sit in my closet and draw all the time. But I started doing things commercially when I was in high school. So your parents, when you were, you know, picking up the pens and you were drawing and all of that, were they encouraging you to be an artist? Because I know a lot of kids today, you're, they're told, you know, that's something fun, but, you know, right. it's a hard way to make a living. Well, my dad was an artist, is an artist, very talented. I learned a lot from him. And um, so I think that that, I think he went through that. I think he went through the whole, you can't make money at an artist. He did okay. So I don't think there was any concern there. It, there was not a matter of, I think with me, a matter of choice. I was just, ever since I was a little kid, I just, that's how I communicated was with uh, drawings car and cartoons and right. humor. At this point, I want to talk about one of the legendary celebrity cartoonists on the Hill, besides you, was of course Paul Conrad, who passed yeah. away back in 2010. He was just, you know, a unique individual. he was unbelievable. Yeah. He was a giant in the field. And so I wondered if you had a chance to, you know, talk to him, talk shop, and did he have any advice for you? I had, um, my dad's partner, Don Cracky, was a really good friend of Paul's. And, um, and I knew Paul's daughter, Carol, in, in high school. But for, I think, a Christmas gift, um, my dad had the idea that he wanted to get me a Paul Conrad original cartoon. So I think he was in his office with Don. And- That a great dad. Yeah, great dad. And so he, 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 he told Don his idea. Don picked up the phone, called Paul, and said, hey, I've got this, I mean, Roger's son, Gary here, thinks he wants to be a cartoonist, can you draw him a little doodle? <laughs> so for Christmas, I get this little framed print that says, with Nixon, that's how old this, that's how far <laughs> back this goes. Nixon was still relevant. So it's got a little cartoon of Nixon, and we've got a little speech bubble, and it says, good luck, Gary, on your cartoon career. And I, I think I was in junior high when I got it. Wow. And I have it hanging up in my office. Everywhere I work, I have that hanging up. It's all yellow and, you know, the acids coming through the paper, but. But then Especially. did you cross paths with him and ever, you know, did you ever talk to him about I your work? I think I met him maybe once or twice, but yeah, right. I was probably, did I'm you, sure I was What did you think of his work? I mean, did you enjoy oh, I think it? Was, I thought he was great. I thought he was I great. I think one of the things he said, you know, when it comes to being a cartoonist, it's it's 90% of it's the idea and 10% yeah. is really the drawing. Is that right. how you feel about that? Well, I think he I think he spent a lot more time and on his drawing than I do because I do this kind of in the to kind of work it in my day right talk about your day because besides doing the political the cartooning for the paper you haven't you have another job in yes. your life talk about what you do and i um work for a company called jerry lee uh we're in downtown and um it's an apparel company so i do a lot of the ideas concepts illustrations on mainly t-shirts that you'll see in kohl's or target or walmart or places like that and then when i want to impress well not impress people but <laughs> sound like i'm doing something that's kind of cool i i this tell, is when that yeah. peninsula part of yeah, you comes I'm out like, whoa yeah tommy bahama i see you wearing a tommy bahama shirt so i um i personally uh conceptualize and write copy for all the tommy bahamas uh, uh screen tees all their graphics not the button down shirts and all that but the the fun stuff that has the parrots on it and you know and they're you know water skiing or drinking at a bar or whatever I do all that stuff fun so that's stuff. fun it's fun so you love it's what fun. you do I love I love that I love anything where there's there's a humorous element to it right I yeah. used to do you know I used as an illustrator I used to do a lot of woodcuts and things like that you know I'll draw wood the still life of fruit it's horrible <laughs> for me there's nothing funny about a still life of fruit. Right. So. You'd like to do a lot of a animation. I mean, look at all the animals around us here, too, right? Well, I've got a lot of inspiration from that. Because they, they all have, I mean, it could sound crazy, but they all have personalities, you know? Yeah. And I, you get a lot of a lot from that. You know, and I grew up watching Bugs Bunny. You know, to me, looking back, Bugs Bunny, the, the Chuck Jones Bugs Bunny, they're, they're, they're classics. It's they're, They haven't been, you know, they haven't been surpassed.